or you, a lot of you probably already know this, but you know, Google made V8 and then they made Chromium or Chrome. And then Node came along after that using V8 as well. So that's kind of cool. <coughs> so here's kind of a more architectural overview of like. So Electron is an open source tool for building cross-platform uh, native apps using web technologies. And so here sits your operating system. And here is Electron, which has Node.js and Chromium. And you develop in it, and the application is written in web technologies, which what well, makes it super accessible and really awesome and easy to use, especially if you write JavaScript, which, like everyone writing JavaScript nowadays. Um, so yeah, what makes uh, Electron so awesome? Um, well, it's, you can use web technologies to develop Electron apps. Um, you get the latest and greatest, so you get awesome, all these new web APIs, like um, there's a WebVR talk yesterday, that's an awesome web, um, web API. Um, WebRTC, you get all these really awesome APIs, the notification API, um, through that. And then you also get all the Node ecosystem, so all the modules that you can get with Node. Not only the native modules, but every module that exists out there today. Um, and there's a nice little utility, um, so you can build your Electron app to get automatic updates. Um, Squirrel is the name of that little automatic updater. And you only have to design for one browser. Who here is a front end developer or develops designs? Did you design and develop like 10 years ago? <laughs> IE7, IE6. Um, yeah, so this makes me really happy. So it looks a certain way, it always looked that way. Um, and then the three platforms. So you can build an Electron application, and then you can deliver this application both on a Mac platform, a Windows platform, and a Linux platform. So not only is it accessible as a developer to, to build native apps now, like you don't have to learn Java to build a Swing app and you know do all this other stuff, uh, the web. I don't even know what Microsoft one is now. Um, so you don't have to learn all those different frameworks for each platform. You can just use Electron. And that's one of the huge benefits. Um, so zooming in a little bit more, um, the way Electron works is there's two processes. So if you kind of think of it as a client and a server, this is still kind of like a server, um, and this is still kind of like um, a client. So this would kind of be a web page, actually this way, right there. And then the main. So main is like the orchestrator, the puppet of all the renders. You can only have one main process. That main process will dispatch and create new instances of different web views. Um, and that's what that does. What's really cool about that is that this is a cool web page, but you also get Node.js, so you can do Node stuff. Um, but you also have the DOM. Um, that's supposed to say remote, not remove. Uh, <laughs> um, and then the web frame, and then IPC. And IPC, uh, IPC stands for Inner Process Communication. So kind of like um, if you've ever used WebSockets, this is kind of like WebSockets. So when you, uh, you can um, send an event to the main process, and the main process can send an event down, and you can trigger things and pass data back and forth. Um, and there are also, um, and there's some lifecycle events here that you can listen to um, when you create a web page. So that's kind of how it works. Um, So yeah, so here's uh, some stolen screen grabs of people's presentations. Um, <laughs> so this is uh, how it's put together. So it just looks a little bit different. But you have your main process at the top, and then the inner process communication happens here, and then you can have multiple render processes. And so this little guy right here kind of handles all that and creates new instances of these browser renders. Um, so the app starts the main process, and you can create a new browser window instance with the HTML, um, and then do it again. So you can do that many times, um, and then you communicate via IPC or the inner process communication. So back and forth, you can send events and you can listen to them. Um, so. What does that look like in code when you're developing an electron? Well, here's kind of a minimal main process code. So here we have uh, 
the electron module, and we're just um, using the S6 or destructuring, and we're grabbing app and browser window. Um, I'm creating a reference to the main window um, because if you lose that reference, it'll mess things up. Um, and then when the app is ready, I create a new instance of my window using browser window. You just use a whole bunch of properties. Um, and then I call a method on it called load URL, and I just direct it to the uh, path for that particular um, file, so the index file. And then when it's closed, just uh, set it back, set main window back to null. And that really, I mean, if you didn't have any other JavaScript or anything, you could wrap this all up in an Electron app. This, this would be your main JS, or your main entry point. Um, but Node is also a the process, so I wanted to show that a little bit. Um, so let's look at this code. We have this onload event. Um, we have fs, we have p, and then we're setting the text content by reading a file in the file system, and then we're appending that child to the uh, DOM. So WTF, like what? <laughs> this is in a browser, and we're able to use a node module, which is pretty insane to me. Um, it's like my dream can true, actually. It's like, every time I, I just do it just to do that. <laughs> um, so, I can write, you know, I can use any node module, and then I can also read any file on the operating system that the computer is on. But you can also, without Babel, without any transpiler, um, you can use mostly what's available in Node and or Google Chrome. Um, modules aren't supported yet, which would be nice, but um, so we're doing all that there. Isn't that pretty cool? Um, so what has been made with Electron? Well, there's a lot of text editors out there. These are just the big ones. So GitHub, Atom, everyone's used Atom, that's built with Electron. Um, Microsoft Visual Studio Code is a Electron app. And uh, Facebook made a, a text editor called Nuclei. I never used it. That is another text editor. Um, so I actually, uh, I know a I have a friend who works for GitHub here in Charleston. And I, I bother him a lot, but I told him I was in this presentation. I was like, can you ask people at GitHub, like, what is the coolest project that is out there today? And um, actually, one of the maintainers on Electron like, told him, this is the one. This is the, <laughs> the coolest. This wins all of them. I don't know, if, has anyone heard of Jibo? So I, I'm still blown away. I started looking into it. And um, it's basically kind of like Echo, but a lot better than Amazon Echo. It, uh, it, has, an, it has an SDK that um, has their own editor, and that's written in Electron. Um, but there's a lot of cool things you can do with it. And everything, all the software stuff is written in Electron, at least developers. Um, Slack. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you use Slack. So Slack's built on Electron, not on Mac or Linux, but on Windows. It's uh, built on Electron. Um, there's this really big open source project called Nihilus. So if you ever want to see like an enterprise level um, app built in Electron, in addition to Atom or New Flag, um, go look at Nihilus. This is a mail client, a um, cross-platform mail client, that is all written in Electron, which is pretty insane. Um, we'll do that. Um, so yeah, I'm not the best at PowerPoint. I like live coding, which I know a lot of people don't like to do during presentations. But, um, I'll do that. Or at least go through some, some apps. Is that cool? All right. Any questions so far? I kind of, I don't know what question I thought it was. It was 15. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a great question. Um, I think it's like the latest stable. Um, we can actually log that. Um, I don't know. But it's a, it's a recent one. Like, that's one of the benefits of the way they've architected Electron is they, they update Node with every release of Electron. So they kind of keep pace with the Chromium and Electron. Um, so you're going to get the latest. So when a new API gets released and it's in a stable Chrome or stable Node, 
electron modules are available after node six, right? That's gonna, um, I can't wait for that. Um, that'll be available in electron shortly after I'm So, um, I don't know the exact version, but I think it's in the fives somewhere. Five, five, maybe? Five, five ten. There we go. So, I mean, they're pretty good about updating and all that. So, you're not using node 0.12, you're using node 5. Um, yeah, let's go here now. Let's see. 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 Let's um, since there's a lot of subtleties between operating systems, does Electron have a, a good way of saying like, hey, do this thing this way on Windows and this thing this way on Mac? So they try to abstract a lot of that away, but there's still things like the menu system. Mm -hmm. um, like a new WebKit, that was one thing, I was talking to Tom Wilson yesterday about this. Um, he's like, yeah, I got excited about new WebKit, but then when you had to do things cross-platform, you had to do all these if statements, and it was just a mess. Um, but they have a process object in Electron that you can call properties on, and those have like um, platforms. So if you say process.platform, it's Darwin, it's Microsoft. So you can, I mean, you still have to do a little bit of things, but for the most part, like a lot of it um, is very equitable across all that platform. That's a great question. Um, I think there's some idiosyncrasies with when you run up the packager. So there's an Electron packager that actually creates a dot app or a dot exe. Um, and those things get a little quirky um, if you're on one platform looking for another. So you, have, you might be using yeah, Windows, using Wine, and creating it. Um, but I, I don't I see Max anywhere, so yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's too bad. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I just wanted to show a couple of projects, um, some code at least for some of those projects. So I have this new Atom, it's kind of like Inception, you're using Atom to the local electron. Um, I feel like cooking a lot, so I'm really hoping it's not going to like mess up on them. Here we go. Awesome. Here is our electron. So let me break this down a little bit. So if we look at package JSON, the main entry point for an electron application is the main property. So make sure that that file is the file that you want electron to bootstrap off of, and that's going to be your main process. And so if we look at our, um, I think I called it app here. Um, this is all I have in it. So. I'm just uh, requiring Electron, and then, I don't know why I do it that way, but we say on ready, and then we create our browser window, and then we load the URL. So that's, that's all I'm doing here. And then the work is happening actually in, um, in my index.js. And so this is actually the exact demo of, I think it's done the node school I.O. There's actually an Electron school one. And this is it. Um, so here's the cat picture. This is node module that just gives you a cat picture. <laughs> um, and then there's this cool little drawing library. And then we're going to use remote file system. And then we're just grabbing the source off of that cat picture. And then we're moving the rest of it. So we don't need it. And then we're using that visualization thing. And then we have this save. And then, mind you, this is in a render process. So we're doing all this in the browser context. Um, and then we use this remote and then get current window. And then the web contents is that current window. So that's the window that we rendered when we created our app. And then we have a nice property, print to PDF. And then basically, um, in our little callback here, um, we just write our PDF file with it by pressing S. Yeah. So. It just executes that save function. Um, so let's run it and see how it works. Um, so in order to install Electron, you just do npm install electron dash pre -build. And I would do this globally. Um, that's really small. So 
it's called an electron pre-built, and that allows you to have um, electrons or run all your apps there. Um, and so now all you need to do is do electron dot, turn directly on in, creates a little electron app. And then for some reason or another, that picture's not showing. So you can install it. So you should run npm install if you have dependencies. So when it's complete, 
I use the uh, main window web contents send, and that sends an uh, event uh, to my renderer process. And then it's closed. And so this is the event I'm listening for to process DNA. And so I'm just sending the file path in here, which is doing this process DNA work. And that's what these three functions are doing. And so if we look at our renderer curve, don't mind all the renderers there. That was all my drag and drop stuff. Um, we have our IPC renderer, our menu, um, and the interpolation in the drop zone. Um, but the magic happens when I drop the file, or it should happen. Um, so when I drop it, I send a message to my main process with the file path to the file that I dragged over it. And then it goes and does that processing and writes the file. Um, and then when it's, I'm listening for the data import finished. And then it's supposed to write this into the browser and just say file conversion complete. Um, and this is really messy. It's like going to my house about And then this is, uh, well, what's this? Oh, I just put the, I like, let me show that. Um, so yeah, any questions about that? So that was just like, you know, this is an electron map. So when, are you supposed to always do your processing and the main and the rendering just 
because the, the UI is set up? Um, I did that because I, I think there's a there's you can't import um, your own exported modules in the browser side of things. I was having trouble, I don't even know why, but I was having trouble like importing my processing file to process it in my renderer. So I went ahead and just put it in the main process and it worked fine. Um, that might be the way you have to do it. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I thought you could do it in both places, but I, I ran into problems when I tried it like with my DNA thing. I couldn't do it in my renderer. Um, I had to do it on my um, server side, so to speak. You have to do it in the renderer window. So there is still some things. It's not like completely you know, flipped. You can do all of it in either place. Um, but I think where it makes sense in the main process is kind of the orchestrator of the browsers. So like you know, global shortcuts um, and closing and opening windows. Um, and you might want to put all your pocket file IO stuff in that or any sort of disk things in there um, just because I guess that's the natural gut reaction for someone. Um, but you can do a lot of that in the, in, in the render stuff. I think there's restrictions there. Like we use uh, CommonJS in, in the renderer, but there is some issue with me using um, my own modules in CommonJS in the renderer. But you can use all the natives. Like I use FS. Um, you could probably use any native or mod module from NPM, just not something that right to a path. Yeah. So I think like you were kind of just saying, you can use pretty much any NPM module um, that in essence will kind of do what native technology would do if you were writing this in like Xcode or Swift or whatever to, to create those apps. So this is kind of like a wrapper for that, but have you come in at any um, efficiencies, I guess, that you really can't replicate for what this is today in terms of Browser, or not browser, yeah, and you know this has kind of been a hobby of mine. So I haven't built anything of any largeness. Like I didn't run into any sort of performance issues because I don't have any apps in that people use. But um, for the most part, like you could do if you could do it with Node, and if you could do it with a browser, you could do it in Electron. Yeah, I was gonna say. I guess the the proof is just Adam. You know, that's yeah. pretty much if you can do that, then you can do. Quite There's a lot of. I mean, you saw the all the things that are built with it. I mean, you can, you know, Adam was built, I mean, I'm using the Adam editor, so it definitely does a lot of cool things um, as far as for editors, but, you know, I don't know if doing a game here with a lot of process, I don't know if that would get really, like, set up your battery or things like that. Um, I don't know. That's, that's a really good question. Um, man, I thought this was, yes. So have you seen anything on the Chromium to roadmap to the towards Android? Have you seen anything that they've talked about this since they have such a dependent scan? No, yeah, I didn't. So what is that? Like what are they doing for Android? So Google's decided that they're going to merge Chromium and Android and it's gonna be looking more like Android than it does like Chromium. It's like so it's part of Android, you mean, not just and, something? And, yeah, and so like Chromium, like Chrome OS. You know, oh, yeah, I see. Chrome desktops, Chrome notebooks, all those, are going to not be set to be able to have Chrome OS. Um, um, so I didn't know if you had seen anything, if you were plugged in such a form, if it was going to be plugged in. No, I haven't seen anything of that. Um, that'd be interesting. I don't think it would, I mean, I don't know if it would have an effect directly on the sure. My understanding is that Chromium Code would continue to be open source and maybe it's not a big deal. Yeah, I mean, if it's open source, hopefully, and it's maintained still, hopefully it's still active. Right? Um, there's also some great resources. Let me go back to the presentation real quick. Um, so I have, there's this repo with all these sample apps. Um, where it shows how to use these different APIs. So like camera, file explorer, um, the menus. And so I actually have that form. Um, 
so the uh, file explorer So it looks kind of like Finder in a way. And this is all electron. Quarter uh, camera. I think I can show that one. Uh, let's see, what's the phone? Frames window. There's a lot of like tutorials and videos on Electron now. I was really surprised because with no webkit, it's like no one liked it and they just didn't, no one cared. <laughs> it was really hard to learn, but the documentation for um, Electron is pretty outstanding. If you go to uh, electron.atom.io, one, you can see everything it was built with. Um, the documentation is pretty awesome. So if we look here, there's a bunch of boilerplate, so there's a, a React um, boilerplate, there's an Angular Electron boilerplate, um, and you just do a vanilla. And then it shows you, so there's certain modules you can only use on the main process, um, and then there's certain modules that really only live on the web or renderer process. So, and then they share things like this. Um, Gosh, or native image, screen image, shell. Yeah. And jump into here, and it, it details everything. So this app will show you all the life cycle events that will be emitted through all the renders. Um, and browser one, so when you create a new browser window, uh, there's so many options for it. Like, you can make it uh, frameless. So it doesn't have all the chrome around it. Um, you can make it full screen. There's so many crazy things if it's a kiosk. Um, so you can make an electron app to go into like a kiosk where you know touching, like getting money out of it. Um, and I was playing a lot of these. I have like this kitchen sink demo app that I'm scared of opening because I think that's <coughs> Dark theme. Um, I'll show you another cool one. So, y'all probably know uh, Sindri Sordis. Um, he, he actually has a great repo called uh, Awesome Electron. And in this repo, there's literally awesome resources. So, um, there's closed source apps, and this has a list of a lot of those apps. Um, here's a lot of boilerplate, so here's a, there's even a Yeoman generator for it. Um, and these are all the tools. So pre-built is like the binary of Electron. Um, this guy, Mass Art, um, he's an amazing developer, but he, he builds a lot of these on his own. Um, the Packager app, the Updater app. And I was going to show the Preen. So Preen is an interesting library. Because I was surprised at how simple it was. Um, so what this is, this app is just a, an Electron app that wraps the Messenger app from Facebook, and it just loads it in a web view in Electron. So if we go to uh, if we look at this app, it's pretty great. Here's 
So it's just loading the Facebook one on our Facebook blog here. That's so my personal. But you log in. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my wife. That's my wife. Um, this is a great example of you know listening for these events in an app. He, he didn't really write any code to like do anything here. All he's doing is um, like here's the browser code. Uh, he has some preferences. But all he's doing is he's doing some query selectors on that loaded remote uh, page, and he's just kind of doing like clicking on his own. And, um, so he's just kind of remote controlling what you would do on the website through different uh, IPC models, and this is happening in the browser. Um, what I really like is he has this good storage thing, so he just has a setting storage, and it's super simple, and it just writes a data.json file with all your references in there. Um, this is a great app to look at if you want to kind of build out something it's fairly straightforward. Um, but all this Electron app is doing is wrapping a website, and then it's just doing everything inside of the Electron app, which is pretty cool. And so you could do that. You could build your own full. I also have like a Magic the Gathering app that I keep talking about that I have built, and it's an Electron. I've had that for a year. Um, but yeah, that's kind of. I just wanted to show off Electron today and expose everyone to it. I think it's a really cool project and um, like if you know JavaScript you can build a desktop app now which you, I mean that's that's pretty cool in its of itself. Um, but that's pretty much all I had today. Are there any questions about Electron? Has anyone done anything Electron before? Still around yeah. Cool. Well thank you all for this is the first developer-focused event really here in Charleston. We've had a few others like Code Show, um, but this one, you know, there's been a lot of startup events like Big South and entrepreneurial type events, and those are great. And I think that um, to attract developers, you also want to, you know, keep them excited and learning um, and networking. And this is uh, a huge event for that for the community.